All right, this little symbol right here is the most important symbol. You probably see it all the time. Maybe you don't even know what it is, but uh, you should. This is the symbol for RSS. And what RSS is, it's a, it's a protocol, it's, it's a format that gives you the equivalent of a social media feed that is fully customizable, that you can, you can pull from uh, it, people's random blogs, you can pull from uh, you know Twitter pages or GitHub pages or Facebook pages, you can pull from all this stuff and aggregate all of the things you want to look at in one place. And basically uncensored, uh, it, it's not filtered by an algorithm. You need to look into RSS. People used to use them all the time back in the days, and I feel like now it's even more necessary. Um, so we're going to learn what RSS is in this video. So I'll go ahead and show you how I consume product, how I um, actually look at, I, I, you know, instead of opening up a browser and looking for, you know, at all the YouTube channels I like or checking my subscriptions, I don't subscribe to anything, I don't follow anyone. I use instead a program called Newsboat. Now Newsboat, of course, in keeping with uh, this channel, of course, it is a command line application. Um, so it looks something like this. I'll go into it in a second, but just before you turn your, turn your brain off, if you're, uh, I don't know, a normal human and you don't like things on the command line, just know that RSS can be used in all these different formats. Here, for example, is another RSS program. This is uh, Liferia. I don't exactly know how they want to pronounce this, but you can tell it's not mine because it has all this normie stuff in it, like BBC and uh, uh, XKCD. Um, but basically, you can see what this is doing. It has all these different sites. It looks to the RSS feeds in those sites and it gets new updates. So it's a news feed without having, uh, you know, an actual, you know, without going to these websites or being filtered by them or anything like that. So anyway, that's just to show you that now there are a million applications for doing this. I'm really going to talk about the one I use, but the principles are always the same. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to turn off this one, but. Uh, so here's mine. Now you can see I have it organized in some loose sections. Now notice there are actually, I, I use a bunch of different sites. You know, I, for example, here I have, um, you know, like Arch and Artix Linux, up, Linux updates. So let's say, for example, you're running Arch and you need to, you really should subscribe to their RSS feed because, oh, every once in a while they have something you have to manually change when you update because something got, you know, revised or something like that. Um, you can keep up with people's individual blogs, uh, see whatever they're talking about. Um, and now all, any of this stuff I can click and I can go to the web page it's on. A lot of blogs will just appear in the RSS feed reader. You can just read them from there. Additionally, you can actually watch YouTube from the command line. Um, so for example, I have a lot of videos here and I think I have uh, some tech videos here as well. Um, so all of these are like YouTube channels. So I have them set up, so let's say I go in here and I want to watch this video. Well, I have a particular binding, I could either go in here, uh, but if I press my binding, it will actually stream that video directly from YouTube without a browser. It'll stream it to my computer here and it'll play it in MPV. So I can watch that there. Um, I also have a, a binding for queuing up videos to download. Um, actually, I'll bring up my little config file for Newsboat. Newsboat is the program that I, did I even say that? Newsboat is the RSS feed reader that I'm using. Um, but uh, so you can go into the config and you can set dif different ways of how to deal with links. Um, I have this little script that uh, queues and downloads videos or stuff like that. So my internet is particularly slow as I'm sure a lot of you guys know. So what I often do is if there's a series of videos I wanna watch, um, I, you know, I might go in here and I might press the queue video thing and it'll queue, uh, you know, it'll download this or download some other video or something like that. Of course, I don't actually want to download these videos right now, so I'm going to cancel them. Um, but anyway, that that's just the general, um, and, and you can do like a lot of things with this. Let me actually go into, so it used to be back in the day, I should say, um, basically every single site will just transparently show you your, their RSS feed, read, uh, you know, uh, feed. Um, like for example, if you go to my site, you see there's an RSS icon. If you click on that, you're going to get this very confusing looking thing that's going to format in a second. A big X. See, I, I actually have a huge one. I never delete anything from my RSS feed. I probably should, but um, this is what an RSS feed looks like raw. And then when you give the link to this to your RSS feed reader, 
it will then process this and it will say, okay, here's an entry, here's an entry, here are the links from this entry, uh, and it'll format it in HTML or whatever. So this, are, this is what my RSS feed looks like raw, um, although I do actually have, we can actually go to what my blog looks like here, um, and that's what it actually shows up as. Now, in my case, I actually have a wrapper script for my blog that uh, generates like blog posts on my website and simultaneously generates RSS feeds for them. For example, you can actually just click on my blog and it'll show uh, all the stuff going on here. You can click on the entries individually, or I have them so you can view them in the RSS feed uh, reader. Um, so that I... Either of that works. Now, it used to be that everyone did RSS feeds more or less like I have them, like you just click on the thing and they're there. Uh, but now a lot of times you have to go looking for RSS feeds. So one example is let's say, um, you know, let's say GitHub, okay? Let's say I'm gonna go to my GitHub here. Um, let's say you're looking at some kind of software project and you wanna get updates. Notice that I actually have a couple software projects here. I have uh, Cirques, LF, I follow, I, I like to, there are a couple things I'm waiting on in these repositories, so I want to see what's going on, and uh, libxft, still waiting, still waiting for that patch to be merged, um, but, you know, if you click on a software project, let's say Mutt Wizard, um, now you can, I, I think you can get feeds for the issues and uh, the comment, or the uh, commits as well, so if I go to the commits here, now the thing is, you usually, in most cases, you have to go looking for an RSS feed, so here I'm on the commits page, I'm going to look at the page source, that's uh, control U on Brave, uh, and it's going to bring up the source code for that. And a lot of times you have to go looking for an XML file, okay, that's not it, that's not it. Um, but you'll see that there is a little, it says Atom plus XML. The, uh, an, another, I mean, so there are RSS feeds and there are also, also Atom feeds, both of them will work usually for your reader. So if I take, um, you can click on this, this is actually a, a, re, a feed that we can use as well. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put it in my uh, URLs file, which is just a list of all the different um, uh, things I subscribe to. So if I uh, renew my um, uh, newsboat here, you'll see that I'll now have this, I can See what's at this feed. Oh, and now I have um, all the updates to Mutt Wizard. Okay, so now I can see what kind of recent stuff has been added. Um, so that's in general how it works. Now, additionally, you can do things like uh, Twitter um, and other sites like that. I think I have a couple here. Let's see. Yeah. So I have, um, you know, let's say Twitter, of course, does not. It used to be that they just gave you RSS feeds. Nowadays, you have to go through other sites to do it. So this is, uh, the links I have here is actually to a... Um, uh, a, a, a wrapper, um, uh, is that the right word? I guess a proxy site for tw Twitter called Knitter. And Knitter basically, it's really, it's actually a nice site because it just takes um, Twitter feeds, takes all the JavaScript, all the, the spyware and stuff, and it puts them in a much cleaner site, but also you can subscribe to, they give you RSS feeds for this. So you can just, it automatically creates RSS feeds, you can subscribe to them, it's very nice. So Knitter is a nice site for that. Um, additionally, if you want a universal solution, one example that people often want is Facebook pages. Okay, so I actually have a couple Facebook pages in my um, RSS feed. They're all like, I don't want to say personal, but they're like stores in my area, so I won't show them to you because you'll know exactly where I live, or at least more about. Um, but what you can do, let's say you have a public Facebook page you want to subscribe to. Well, there's this very nice um, software project, project called RSS Bridge. And this actually doesn't just work for Facebook, it works for everything. They actually list out all the things they have, you know, Wikipedia, Pirate Bay, uh, you know, they have Twitter too if you want to use this instead. Google search, you could even make a, uh, you know, check Google search to see what new stuff is on a particular search. Um, so uh, this is a software project. You could actually just look, you know, search for RSS Bridge and it's going to bring up a whole bunch of uh, instances of it. It's something you you host on your own server, basically. But of course, you can use someone else's if it's public. So I think I clicked on one here, and it looks something like this. And if you want to put in like a Facebook page, you can do it right here, you know. Um, so we can say Facebook, uh, and oh, we want the, a main site. Uh, or, no, I didn't mean to click on that. Um, they give you a little form you can fill out. Let me go back here. So Facebook, um, show more, and then you can give them you can either just put in the group you want and they will give you an RSS feed for that and you could subscribe to that. If you need a username, or no, no, this is subscribing to users. I think there's a way to actually log into Facebook. 
uh, and stuff like that. But I think if you're doing that, you'll probably want to do it on your own instance. Uh, but this is just a really nice way um, to subscribe to different sites. And of course, you know, when I, you know, I never open my browser to see what's going on. I can just uh, um, open this and, you know, check blogs or something like that, check YouTube channels. Um, and again, any of this stuff I can just watch from my command line. I can just go in here, uh, click my binding for it, and it'll come up. Um, so anyway, that's in general how RSS feeds work. Now again, if you don't like um, the program I'm using because, I don't know, it's on the terminal and it's scary, there are a million different programs to use to read RSS uh, feeds. It's just um, one of those things that... Like there are, li I mean, if anything, it's hard to make a decision. I don't really have a, I mean, everyone who uses, I guess, command line applications uses Newsboat pretty much for RSS. There are actually other, other ones I should say nowadays. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely check it out. Look for a program you like. You could even use things like Thunderbird, I think, or Firefox maybe even has an RSS reader. They're everywhere. They've just been, I mean, you probably, again, you've probably seen this, um, uh, icon like symbol a million times and you've maybe never known what it is. I, I probably saw it for years before I knew what it is. Um, but yeah, it will definitely change your life if you use it properly. Okay, so that's it. See you guys next time.